Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Murph. Welcome to today's show. Today we have another installment of World of Tanks builds. Uh, World of Tanks tanks, you're welcome. However you want to say it. But I've got something that um, is pretty unique in that I don't know of anyone else that's, that's done this. So I ran across on the tech tree every once in a while. They'll come up with a premium tank that you can buy Ooh, ah, uh, great ways to, you know, take your money. Yeah, I have purchased a couple. The, um, the Mutant 6 was one of them. A T-78 was another, and that's one we'll have a show on one of these days. But the one that we're going to look at today is called a T-42. Hmm, kind of interesting. Never heard of it before. And I look at it. Well, it's got some characteristics of a of an M41, which is the uh, Walker Bulldog, but the turret is quite a bit different. It looks more like an M47 turret, but not perfectly the same, but it has the big 90 millimeter gun on it. I thought, well, this is kind of weird. So I do a little bit of research, come to find out that it really was a tank that was under development. And we'll talk a little bit about the story of how it was developed, why it was developed, and why it was canceled. But there were actually a couple of them built. I never knew, never heard of this. So one of the things I really like about the World of Tanks game is it introduces you to things that you really never knew existed. And some of them were just blueprints. Some of them actually made it to a mock-up. Some of them made it to... Um, uh, uh, the experimental mode where they would actually build one or two of them and try them out with different things. And you know, a lot of them just went by the wayside. So today we are going to look at how I'm going to build a T42. And we've got a two part, uh, two part to this because there's a couple of other things I'm doing to it that I want for part two, uh, such as a blast bag, uh, that's supposed to be on it in the in the game, and I'm not going to do the blast bag just yet, so we'll have a separate one for that. But uh, today we're going to look at the basic build for this T42 from the game World of Tanks, and I'm doing it in 135th scale. So stick with me. The 90 millimeter gun tank T42 was a medium tank powered by a six-cylinder air-cooled opposed cylinder supercharged engine displacing 895 cubic inches. It was intended to, to fulfill OTCM's dated December 2nd 1948 call for a tank weighing 36 tons and equivalently armed as the M46 while having superior armor. With the engine only producing 500 horsepower concerns that the T42's performance um, was not going to be what it should be. Testing with a T40 loaded to a weight of T42 and powered by the same engine and the transmission equivalent revealed it to be only equivalent in performance to the late model M4A3 which was below the design estimates. There were six prototypes of this vehicle built. So to build this I'm going to use the M41 Walker Bulldog chassis because that's what it looks like this chassis is, is the same as the M41. And I'm going to use the turret from an M47 because it's obviously very close to an M47 turret. So as I get the turret pieces out, I see that I've got a complete 90 millimeter gun, including the breech. That could be kind of cool. Maybe we'll do an open hatch. That's my first thought. Um, later on, I decided not to do that. But anyway, here's the parts we'll need for the turret. 
So I get it assembled and I don't need the gypsy racks. That's the one thing that I don't need on this kit. So we're gonna go ahead and fill those areas with some Tamiya putty and get them sanded down. One thing I am gonna need to do is borrow this little uh, shell hatch that's below the loader's hatch um, from an M46 kit, uh, Dragon M46 kit. Um, that looks like it's a perfect match for what I'm doing. We're going to sand those areas smooth where the gypsy rack was supposed to mount and we should be in good shape. I'm also going to add texture to this turret just like, well, it's, it's cast turret, so I'm going to add um, texture using Tamiya Ultra Thin Cement and you've seen me do that before on a couple of my other builds. For the basic color, I'm going to use Mr. Color number 304. Um, olive drab and I'm going to thin that with some Mr. Color Thinner and I can tell you this stuff sprays amazing. It's a great paint and it's a good color for this base color for this project. So I'm going to spray everything with it and then I'm going to give it a clear coat with uh, some X22. I'll use this to me a clear a couple of different times during this project. So the hull goes together quickly. I mean 30 minutes and the whole bottom hull is together went ahead and got it painted in its base color and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, clear acetate in here for the windows um, for the vision ports for the driver Now here's a trick you've seen me do before with a sharpie to paint the road to color the road wheels it goes quick and easy hit this with some clear um, and it looks it looks great so after that I went ahead and put the tracks on these are the Tamiya rubber band tracks I painted the edges of them with a roof brown from Floquil that I have laying around. And then I kind of test fit to see how things are going to look. I'm going to have to do some work on the turret ring, obviously, to get this turret to fit. So we're going to cut this area out. I'm going to use my, uh, my sprue nippers, and we're going to start cutting this area out. I'm going to have to use my hobby knife, though, and make it a lot wider. <laughs> a lot wider as you can see here now I've mixed up some Larry's bath water and if you don't know what Larry's bath water is check out um, one of my very first videos is how to do a pin wash and I mix this up it's kind of a grimy sludgy uh, black and I put this in all of the cracks and crevices and around the um, the toolboxes around the hatches um, in the engine vents all of that kind of stuff gets a coat of this and you can see how that just gets down in those cracks and crevices and it's really going to make these pop uh, many of you have seen me use this technique before it's something I do on pretty much every project here's another look at that okay so you get this look right here and you kind of see where there's some a uh, little bit that's, that's spilled over and don't worry we're going to remove that i'm going to take a q-tip just damp it down a little bit go over these areas after they're dry and look all of the highlighted area that's gone it's just now down in the cracks and crevices right where i want it okay so my next step we're going to use a dry brush technique that i have using xf59 and fx62 we're going to kind of mix them together Okay, now we're going to do that dry brushing technique and what I've got here is the uh, Tamiya Olive Drab 62 and I've got Desert Yellow 59. Just going to kind of dab a little bit of it together here. Wipe it off on my Towel. and then we are going to go over very lightly the edges if I feel it's not light enough I can just add a little more of the yellow and if it's too light we'll just add a little more of the green but I take my time to go over and, and lightly airbru airbrush, yeah, lightly uh, dry brush all of the highlight areas, all of the corners, edges, things like that. It's 
really hard to see the details with this uh, with this camera angle sorry but we'll get you a good close-up shot here in a bit and I just uh, just I kind of do it by feel how do I feel this looks is it the effect I want that one I'm not too happy with so I just wipe it off a little with my finger more green. And again, just try to pick up all the highlights. Try not to miss any corners and edges. If I get brush streaks I don't want, this is a good time to use my finger and just wipe them out. Go back and hit the edges again. My weld seam is going to get some scrubbing. I'm just going to methodically go over this whole tank and try and pick out all of the corners, edges, high spots, you know. Okay, I'll continue this and... Uh, We'll come back and look at the finished product in a minute. Okay, so you can see how that effect here has... has um, uh, probably better to use my brush. How right here, it's given us some tonal variation there, as well as picking up the highlights. And enhanced this area right through here. And you'll notice how we've been able to highlight all of this. And give us some of that tonal variation uh, in our paint as well. Now with this, uh, I've been able to enhance the, the weld seam that's very prominent on here. You'll see I got some on my decal. That's okay. We're going to clear that off later. It, it'll be perfectly fine. But because I did that scrubbing technique all over the top and the side, we were able to enhance the, uh, the texturing and get it to stand out. Okay, so on to the neck. Okay, so like I said, I got a little bit of paint on my, uh, on my star. What we're going to do is we're going to take some Tamiya lacquer thinner already poured some in the cap here make sure my brush is nice and clean I don't want to contaminate this worse just take a little bit on my brush just a little bit and I'm going to go over the areas and it's gonna pull that right off of there I still want to keep a little bit on to just give it a little bit of a weathered look, but I had too much, so. There, see better. And this one's not too bad, but we're gonna clean that up a little bit with this Tamiya lacquer thinner. And 
there you go again. It's a bit dirtied up. Now, for the periscopes, you can see here, um, what I've used is just some testers uh, green. This is 1171 uh, flat beret green, which is a color I use on a lot of different things. Okay, so I did that and just a drop of black along with it. And you can see that's what I've used for the periscopes. Now we'll go over these periscopes with some future later on to give them a nice glass look. But hopefully you can see that. All right, on. Okay, so next we're going to take this um, X10 gunmetal. And um, I've got two different brushes. One is more of a scrubby type weathering brush. I'll show you. Um, pretty old and beat up. Okay, so there's that one. And then this is uh, one I use for a lot of different things. This one is a 5 0 atlas and it's you know good for for details and such certain certain details I'm gonna put a little bit of this gunmetal on here wipe some of it off and then I'm gonna go around to the edges of uh, things like where the um, where the That were the uh, textured area. Sorry, the cast, the casting, uh, and some of the other areas meet. We're just going to put a little bit of chipping. Um, I'm going to go over the springs of the hatch and part of the. Um, hinge and then just little spots along the um, hatch especially where you'd come in and out just to give us uh, that kind of a chipping effect now there's there's definitely other ways to do chipping I know that and I have done the hairspray technique and other things like that for what I want to do here I'm not getting too crazy, so I just want a little bit. And again, if I don't like, I can wipe it off and start over. Um, if I don't like how it looks here. So, hopefully you can see that okay. Now I'm going to go along the rest of this turret and... The rest of the hull so it's going to be a little bit for me to do that uh, we'll be back to take a look after okay so before we go any further uh, we'll look at how this little bit of chipping turned out and you can see it's a very very subtle very subtle uh, effect Put some along the weld seam here, some along this door. I don't have the wood part of my Pioneer tools painted up yet, but I do have at least the uh, gunmetal part. And you can see some of the scrapes there in the paint, the springs, and just some of the chipping in, in these different areas. Now, I feel I did it pretty subtle. Um, the picture that we have from the game looks uh, like there's a lot of chipping. I don't really want to go quite that far. I wanted to keep it subtle. And we went ahead and put some uh, future on the periscopes. So they have a nice shine to them like they were actually glass so 
let's hope I might go over them again anyway so that gives you the idea on the turret and then here on the chassis and again very subtle areas where the paint would chip off and rub off pretty pretty quick um, some scuff marks some fuel stains Trying to pay closer attention to the uh, hinges and handles and those areas in doing this chipping. So again, a very, very uh, subtle technique. Well, that's it for today, folks. Join us again soon for part two. We're going to do the dust cover over the mantlet and the final reveal on how this thing turns out.